Greencape works at the interface of government, business and academia to identify opportunities and solutions that are emerging in the green economy. We look to understand what the trends are and where we're seeing economically viable solutions tipping over to commercial viability. We try to write those up in our market intelligence reports and make them available to the market. Green Cape works in the green economy with specific focus on sectors such as renewable energy, agriculture, water, waste and electric mobility. The green economy has the potential to provide a wide range of new decent jobs to the citizens of South Africa. Everything from working on wind farms to working on solar farms to providing the sorts of agricultural clean tech solutions that, that we expect to see. Some of these jobs will be high tech, but a great deal more of them will be low skill jobs. Green Cape's energy program focuses on both the demand and supply side of the South African energy landscape. This includes a new generation looking at utility scale and small scale embedded generation. It includes energy efficiency on a commercial, industrial and residential basis. And lately it's also starting to include biogas and biomass research and also a look at electric vehicles as the market starts to grow in South Africa. On utility scale, there's a lot of excitement about the upcoming REAP rounds. And this will really be the start or the reinvigoration of the utility scale program in South Africa. We've seen a five-year delay since the last round was signed, and this will be the real kickstart to that industry again. South Africa has a single utility model that is managed by ESCOM with a total generation capacity of 44 gigawatts. Since the establishment of the Independent Power Producers Office in 2010, 6.4 gigawatts of renewable energy that has been procured through the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producers Program, of that, just over 4 gigawatts of energy has successfully been connected to the national grid. We've identified four market opportunities. The first one being the bid windows, that would be bid window five, that we anticipate to be announced second quarter of 2021. The second opportunity is as the market matures and is well established, we focus that there's going to be uh, increased local manufacturing activities across the value chains. And this is across all the solar panels, onshore wind and utility scale battery. The third opportunity is the distributor generation capacity, which is looking at projects that are sized between 1 megawatt to 10 megawatts. And this opportunity, based on the integrated resource plan, brings an opportunity of 500 megawatts of installation per year. The fourth opportunity is the utility scale size battery storage. This opportunity currently has a size of just over 500 megawatts based on the integrated resource plan. In terms of small scale embedded generation, we're seeing this market continue to grow. It really is one of the most exciting markets within the South African energy space at the moment. This market has now grown to more than one gigawatt in total installed capacity, becoming a real key player in the energy landscape for South Africa. The term energy services is used to describe two key market segments. Firstly, embedded generation, which includes solar voltaic systems and energy storage. And secondly, energy efficiency, both of which are increasingly bolstered by offerings in the energy finance sector. Within embedded generation, there are four emerging opportunities for investors. Model diversification for solar rooftop PV in the commercial and industrial sectors. Solar power purchase agreements. Solar rooftop PV for energy resellers and in-house capacity building for property developers. Within energy storage, the emerging opportunity for investors is in behind the meter applications for backup and uninterruptible power supply. Within the energy efficiency market, there are two emerging opportunities for investors, smart metering and demand side management, and aggregated interventions for commercial buildings and retrofits. 
The most recent trend in the starts of shifts is with the electric vehicle market. This is still a very much a young industry in South Africa, but represents a significant opportunity in the longer term for South Africa. In the electric vehicle space, we are now seeing our key export markets implementing bans on the importation of internal combustion engine vehicles. These bans necessitate the need to pivot towards manufacturing electric vehicles, as well as we're seeing this industry having a lot of potential to grow in coming years. With this transition comes the opportunity to increase our generation capacity for clean energy, such as solar photovoltaic systems. There's also an opportunity to create a local manufacturing industry for lithium ion batteries. And finally, we see electric mobility playing a key role in boosting sustainable transportation in South Africa. Due to the declining economy, businesses are looking for cross-sectoral applications that address their needs. These include solutions that address our energy security, their energy demand, waste management, waste value add applications, water reticulations, reduction of carbon footprint and reduction of the carbon emissions as well. A good example for cross-sectoral solutions would be a biogas technology. Biogas technology basically adds value to either organic waste residues or agricultural waste residues, converts it into a biogas that can be used as an alternative fuel within energy applications or it can be used to convert it into electricity and heat. It also produces a digestate which can be used as a soil enhancer or has high nutrient properties that can be used in agriculture culture as well. In addition to adding value to organic waste residues, biogas also contributes to the renewable energy mix. It provides an alternative renewable energy besides solar PV and wind. It is considered sort of the third fastest growing renewable in the world. The Agriculture Market Intelligence Report looks at opportunities within the primary production component of the agricultural value chain. It's really important that agricultural practices become more sustainable because South Africa is a resource scarce country with below average rainfall and therefore we, to ensure long term food security we need to protect our soil, biodiversity, our ecosystem services and of course our water resources. Some of the new opportunities that we identified in the 2021 Agri MIR are that we've taken a closer look this year at opportunities for smallholder and emerging farmers where we've previously looked at established commercial farmers. So these technologies or rather practices include organic agriculture and we've also taken a closer look or rather deeper dive into renewable energy technologies within the agriculture sector such as small scale PV, uh, solar powered irrigation systems, biogas and energy storage. The agricultural and agri-processing sectors are ideal for biogas because of the agricultural residues generated and organic waste generated. This provides an opportunity to add value to those residues by generating biogas which can be used as an alternative fuel or generate electricity and heat. In addition, the digested produced by a biogas plant can be used as a soil enhancer or in other agricultural applications. In terms of the agriculture sector and the impact that COVID-19 has had, with the exception of primary production linked to the alcohol industry, particularly the wine industry, we've actually noted that agriculture's growth and production has been particularly robust this year. This has been one of the sectors that has been a bright light in the economy in exceeding export projections and expectations over the past year. The water and sanitation market within South Africa and more broadly in the Western Cape is largely characterized by long-term investment drivers such as water scarcity, largely driven by climatic change and recurrent droughts, ensuring sufficient water for sustainable economic growth and development, and equitable access to water and sanitation to all its citizens. Our National Department of Water and Sanitation is the one that has put this ahead of us to say if we are to meet the SDGs in 2030, which is universal access to, to water and sanitation, we need to focus on reducing our losses and we need to also focus on other opportunities that will ensure that we become a country that is water resident even beyond 2030. One key driver of course is legislation or governance that always puts 
us at the point of you know uh, looking deep into investing in water and one of those is this imminent organic waste landfill ban uh, in 2027 although it's looking into the western cap but what i can say is that we need to ensure that there is a circular economy as part of the sdgs sdg 12 so we also look into ensuring that we convert our waste from the landfills Looking into 2030, we are looking at a 10% gap between demand and supply when we're talking about water. So that's that particular gap that we would like to ensure that we cover it by augmenting and bringing in more uh, water supply schemes than the ones that we've been having because we've been solely dependent on surface water. We identified three key municipal sector opportunities. Firstly, non-revenue water reduction. And secondly, non-sewered sanitation systems. And thirdly, alternative disposal or beneficiation of wastewater sludge. The Waste MOR is funded by the City of Cape Town's Enterprise and Investment Department. Hence, it's got a very strong City of Cape Town focus. Not that it excludes sort of other opportunities that could be generated within the Western Cape and the rest of South Africa as well. For this reason, one of the sections actually deep delves into some of the opportunities in some of the material sectors that we have, and four of these sectors are more closely looked at, and that would be the organic sector, the plastic sector, the builder's rubble sector, as well as the electronic waste sector as well. There are a number of key drivers for development of alternative waste treatment technologies in South Africa. These include policy and regulation, resource scarcity, as well as operational drivers. The recently published State of Waste Report has become the foundation for the development of South Africa's National Waste Management Strategy. This is essentially a strategy on how national government intends on managing the waste in the country. Within the plastic sector, we have three overarching opportunities. The first one is how do we replace the virgin plastic with plastic recyclate of virgin quality. The second opportunity is how do we ensure that the input plastics going into recycling is of a high quality and is results in less overheads for the recycler. And then the third opportunity is really what do we do with the non-recyclable mixed dirty plastics, particularly MSW plastics. There are two opportunities within the e-waste space. The first one is a large scale pre-processing facility. The second one is a processing facility to extract fine chemicals. Within the construction and demolition waste sector, we see a number of key opportunities. This includes builders' rubble crushing contracts and municipalities, opportunities for using builders' rubble as a secondary building material, as well as using builders' rubble as aggregate in road construction. Once an investor has identified opportunities, that's when they can really lean on GreenCape for a more technical and deep understanding of those sectors. Further, they can tap into an investment ecosystem through collaborations with organizations such as InvestSA, the Western Cape Government, Invest Cape Town, which is a department of the City of Cape Town, WestGrow, and of course, Green Cape. Green Cape is the first African member of the International Clean Tech Network. The ICN represents about 15,000 companies in the green economy from four continents. The market intelligence reports are designed to be able to curate and communicate the sorts of opportunities we're seeing for these 15,000 companies here in South Africa and on the continent. 